Hello YouTube, Evil Twin X here again. Uh, beautiful fall day. This is a shed at back of my property and I thought I'd do a little blacksmithing. Um, one of my concerns when I do this hobby is uh, really annoying the neighbors. Uh, the camera makes it look like I live in a state park, but uh, really the neighbors are very close and I don't want to annoy them with the uh, sound of me hammering and the quite a bit of coal smoke that pours out of the forge. But we're going to have a go with it. And right now, I have everything stored in my shed. This is my old Harbor Freight welding cart. Came in pretty handy as a caddy to hold most of my tools, hammers, and a vise. Also by Harbor Freight. And uh, here's my little rivet forge with a buffalo blower. So I'm thinking about converting this corner of the shed into a little blacksmith shop. I don't know how practical it'll be. Um... But uh, I might give it a go. So there's my anvil, and I'm going to slide it over right over here. Uh, I know that's where one of the floor joists are. And I'll support it because it's a quite heavy anvil. And I think I'm going to put up a welding blanket uh, just for some added protection. So there's a little rivet forge. I put it on some bricks just to give it some stability because the ground's quite wet. And once the metal's heated up, just a few steps, and there it is at the anvil. I brought the caddy back in. It just made sense to have all my tools right next to the anvil. And you see the welding blanket. I also threw down some plywood as an extra barrier in case I drop a piece of hot metal. It'll burn that instead of the actual floor of the shed. And then once I'm done hammering away, I just turn around, and the forge is right there. So this is some footage from my previous video. I was trying to see if I can make out the lettering on the anvil and I got this idea of using the baby powder from one of my subscribers crafted. And you can see I was able to um, highlight some of the letters but I could not really make out what it said. And I thought it was just a name of the previous owner. They had stamped their markings on it. But once again crafted came to the rescue and he recognized the shape of the anvil and the markings. Uh, and it's a hay button. This is an Im image off the internet. I got that uh, the markings are a lot clearer, but they do match what I have on mine. So I'm pretty excited. I thought I had a generic anvil, but I actually have a name brand, a hay button anvil. This is a Harbor Freight welding magnet, and I'm gonna use this to try to quiet the ring down on this anvil. So as you can hear, it's a really nice ring. You put the magnet underneath the heel. That's a pretty big difference. So this is, you lift it off. And once again, back on. So lighting the uh, forge is still new to me, and luckily I have my son here to try to help me out. So I'm just poking around here, and I really could use a coal rake, and that's today's project. I'm going to be forging, or attempting to forge, a coal rake. So since I'm starting out in this hobby, I look uh, for inspiration. One is this book by Laura Lai Sims. I highly recommend it. Um, YouTube's another place for inspiration. But I noticed this uh, twisted handle and I thought I would try to incorporate it in my uh, rake. So I heated some angle iron that I had, clamping it in the vise, nice and tight. I probably could have got the metal a little bit hotter. And that's a Harbor Freight pipe wrench that I welded a piece of rebar to the top. Helps uh, with extra leverage to keep your twists nice and straight. And it came out pretty good. Almost looks like the image in the book. I'm pretty happy with that. So it looks like my son is fascinated with what I'm doing. And a little bit of knowledge that I have on blacksmithing, I am passing it down to him. And if he's interested, hopefully we'll do father-son projects together.
Well, I have a lot of footage that didn't work out because I had the camera in the shed with me. And as I was pounding on the anvil, the camera was vibrating so much. I had to discard just about uh, all the action shots. So I had to move it outside. And here I am just uh, making the flat of the rake. Nice and basic. So I'm now I'm back in my garage and here I am trimming the handle. I'm going to be prepping it for welding so I can weld it on the bar. You see a lot of Harbor Freight tools here. One of the few quality tools that I do own is this Lincoln MIG welder. So I finished it up and you can see I put a couple twists in. There's the uh, flat part of the rake and the other side is the handle, but I feel like it can use a little bit of finessing. Uh, I don't like the way this part of the handle looks and I think I can make the rake part just a little bit nicer. So I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to fire up the forge once again. Here I am doing a little experiment. I'm using some fire brick to try and contain the coal into a smaller area so it's so deeper. Uh, I was having trouble getting my metal uh, hot and it's because I didn't have enough coal um, beneath it and on top of my metal. So here you can see it seems like a, a deeper pool and hopefully I can get a better contained flame and a hotter flame. So I heated the tip up and I'm going to be using the horn to try to finesse the top part of the coal rake and just make it a little bit more fancy, a little bit more refined. So we have a nice little bend instead of just a plain old 90 degree. I think it looks a little bit nicer. You can see I can bury this a little bit deeper in the bed of coal. This is the handle I'm heating up. I think it was a little bit ambitious with this handle. Uh, that tip that I mentioned I didn't like. Um, so I'm going to see if I can do something to make it a little bit nicer. My son wanted to give it a shot himself. So here's an aspiring young blacksmith at, uh, at work. Note to self best in a pair of earplugs for both me and him. So I'm trying to draw out the tip of the handle. Kind of looks pretty bad at this point, but I'm gonna keep keep at it. So after trying his hand at blacksmithing, my son wanted to get behind the camera and videotape. I love having a little helper. I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty awesome having my son interested and wanting to hang out with his uh, with his dad. So I'm doing my best to draw out this handle, try to give it some shape. I probably really needed to fire weld this metal together. Um, it is sort of looking good, but it also looks like a complete mess. So I decided to just trim the tip and, no pun intended, cut my losses. Here I am wire brushing everything to kind of make it look nice and pretty. Here's the final product. Uh, I have a couple of twists in, and there's the handle. Not pretty. I think it's a little bit better than what I had before. A little fancy, a little ambitious for my second forging project. Even though it looks like a golf putter, but it is functional. I really want to make all my blacksmithing tools because that's what a blacksmith would do. And what better way 
to improve your skill than to make the tools that you would use in your hobby. This video wasn't meant to be a tutorial. It's really to show that everybody's a beginner. Everybody needs to start somewhere. And this is my beginning. This is the start of my blacksmithing hobby. Well, that's it, guys. Once again, thanks for watching. Thanks for following. Subscribe if you like. And Evil Twin X, signing off.